Welcome to Red Carpet Diary at the Toronto International Film Festival. I'm Joan Kelly at the Visa Screening Room. Parents love their children no matter what. Cheryl Brown spoke to the cast of Beautiful Boy to find out if that's true. Tragedy stretches the promise of for better or for worse. That's the challenge faced by Michael Sheen's character in Beautiful Boy. Hello, Michael Sheen. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. So when we meet your character in A Beautiful Boy, uh, his marriage is, is foundering, and then tragedy strikes. Can you tell me what happens? My character and Maria Bello's character are married, and we have uh, an 18-year-old son, and then we discover that there's been a shooting in the, the school that he's at. Um, you know, the parent's worst nightmare, the police turn up at the door, and he's dead. But it sort of doesn't stop there. It turns out that he's actually the killer. Did we do something? Did we not do something? Was he okay? He's a little quieter than usual. That's all. Where did the seed of this story come from? Um, well, of course, the inspiration is from a shooting. My um, Virginia Tech happened, and um, my parents went to school there. They, they actually met at Virginia Tech, and my sister was born there. And um, so I'm, I think because he was um, Asian, it was really an unusual experience. I mean, the shooting alone, but, but the fact that he was Asian. And I guess, I mean, when, when we think of shooters, we sort of put a white face on them. To, to, so it was, really, um, it was really rocking for my family, you know? Mm -hmm. it, really, it really affected us in some weird way. Start moving forward. So we're just gonna erase our son's memory. Mom, Dad. Oh my God. Please don't hate me. He was depressed. We don't know why he did what he did. He's a murderer! Shut up! Dude, it's our fault! How does Bill handle the tragedy? Well, not very well, really. He's like, I think I can certainly relate to it, and maybe a lot of people can, that um, I think there's so much going on that he finds quite difficult to deal with that he just doesn't really deal with it. He just sort of lives in this strange limbo state where he doesn't really want to get into what he's feeling because it's too dangerous for him. And I think one of, the, one of the hardest things is when you go through quite extreme situations is that there's no rule book. You know, no one comes along and goes, this is what you should feel and this is what you should think and this is what you should do. So one of the hardest things that both characters go through is that they don't really know how to be. Now this story isn't so much about the shooting because where most news stories end off there, this story is how it Im impacted the family involved, the family of the perpetrator. Where did that aspect of the story come to you? In, in, in horrible tragedies, I think we always want someone to blame, just as a society or maybe just as a people. It, I think it makes us feel better that someone gets punished and we sort of can go back to um, happiness again. And um, with the shooter gone, more often than not, they're killed or through suicide mm -hmm. um, at the end of s such a horrible thing that um, there's no one left. So we, we think we want to blame the parents. <laughs> would be different from now on. And I didn't know if they would be better or worse, but for certain, things would change. 